Okay, welcome to Begin to Code with C Sharp. This is the second video in the sequence, Playing with Snaps. My name is Rob Miles and I am the author of this wonderful tome which you can buy in physical printed copy uh, or as a Kindle. And uh, these little videos kind of go along with the text and tell you a little bit about how the Snaps framework work and show you a few walkthroughs and whatnot. So I hope you find them useful and I hope even more <laughs> that you buy the book because the kids all need new shoes. Oh yes, they do. We're going to go through how a Snaps program runs, um, playing with the snap sta Snaps starter program that gets things going, removing the menu display, and then some fun Snaps. By the end of this, you'll be able to write some really silly and probably quite annoying programs. So it's worth sticking around for five or ten minutes just to find that out. Okay, now we've shown you this before. If you have not watched the first video, you really should. The special effects are awesome and some of the acting well, it took my breath away anyway. <laughs> yeah, you should watch that because it explains how the Snaps programs actually get going. So go back to YouTube, pull that out and watch it if you haven't. If you have, this should make perfect sense to you. What we have here is a starter program that comes with Snaps that displays a couple of things on the screen. The first thing it does is set the title of the uh, display uh, and as it says on the comment, <laughs> buy the book. Uh, you can find the purpose of other program statements by reading the book. It's all in there, trust me. Um, this is the first statement of the program. Basically what happens is that inside this little piece here, lines 7 and 8 on the screen, we actually have the two statements that make the program work. This is statement number one and it sets the title to begin to code with C sharp. And the second statement sets the display area of that screen to contain the string Welcome to the world of snaps. Doesn't say it like that, just says it in text, but that's basically what happens. And then when your program finishes, Snaps Framework says, OK, I'll give this guy a bunch of other programs he can pick from. Uh, and so what happens when you run the program is you will see um, this bit is a display you will see on the screen. The top part is the bit that our program statements have made. And the bottom part is a menu that lets you pick all the examples from the text. So you can go to chapter 3 and run the chapter 3 welcome program uh, or more statements or speaking or double output. If you look in the book, in the book there are lots of examples. Each of those equates to one of these programs. You can find it, run it, view it, do all that kind of good stuff and this is kind of how it works. When you want to figure out where the program lives, they're held inside a Visual Studio Solution, which is basically a container for programs that you build on the computer. Um, and that container contains a bunch of stuff, including folders that contain the example chapters, there they are, uh, the images that the programs use, and this file here, which is very, very important, because that contains the actual program file we've just seen. Um, and so this is how it all kind of fits together. Now, this isn't something to worry about. It's something to get your head round, really. Um, it's just how these things work. If I was writing a huge book, I would do it as a series of different chapters. In fact, <laughs> I did this only last year. And each one of them was a separate document, and I had them all arranged and passed them about for editing and all kinds of good stuff. If you're writing a program, similar kind of thing. You'll break it into chunks, and each chunk will do one part of the entire solution. So what I'll do now is I'll show you how this works. I'll drop out of my presentation just for a second. I'll drop down to Visual Studio. Now, what you should have when you did the video thing last time, you should have a folder somewhere called Begin to Code with C Sharp. And inside there should be a Visual Studio solution, which if I double click on it, the computer will open and make available for me to use. It's loading it in now and preparing it. And when we open it, you should see something which is becoming somewhat familiar. This is the start program. These are the two statements that run. And you can see it's actually inside the My Snaps Apps folder here. So if I hit the button to run it, which is this button here, the local machine button, run it on my machine, please, then the system will build that. There'll be a certain amount of hard drive rattling and all kinds of things happening. And then up comes the program. That's the heading that we saw. And that's the text. And this is the menu. Uh, if you want me to prove that this is the case, and, and why not, I go into here, I change this string to other snaps, which is one wonderful. That, and I run the program again. But then what happens now is the string you will see on the screen 
will now have which is wonderful on the end. So whatever I put in here changes the way the program behaves. This is how we are going to write all the programs that we will be creating with Snaps. And the nice thing about it is that once you've done that, it's a Windows program. You could put it in the Windows um, Marketplace and sell it as an application. You can do it, you can show your mum, you can do what you like, show your friends, make it different, whatever. That's what programming is all about. So I will keep on running programs, stopping them, changing them, adding another bit, running them again, and so on and so on. That's kind of how it drops together. So if I now drift back to my presentation, uh, thank you very much from current slide. We've played with the program. Let's keep on going and see what's next. Now, that menu display is fantastic if you want to work your way through the chapters in this book. It's a great way to find the various elements and work with them. Snag is, it gets in the way of our code. We doesn't, don't always want to see that. And so it turns out that there's an option called display control menu at program end which you can set to false if you wish. Um, and if you do that, it means that you don't see that menu. I've just spotted it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to live with this, it's terrible. There's an L missing there, it's control menu. Never mind, no one will no one'll know, Rob. Don't, if you don't mention it, no one will spot it. But uh, the purpose is the same. Um, effectively, if you set this to false, it means don't display that menu. And I can show you this. In fact, I think we even have a slide to say, let's do a walkthrough and do that now. Now, the idea of these videos is that you have the video open in one window on your desktop and a copy of Visual Studio in the other window. And then you can kind of play along with me. So now I can go back to my Visual Studio window, which is here, and I can actually start playing with that. So in here, I can go, oh, and this is rather nice. I go snaps engine dot. DIS. Now, can you see that as I start typing, the IntelliSense, this wonderful thing here, is looking for things that match and then bringing them up to show me. And so everything which starts DIS, and there are quite a few of them, is put into this menu. If I click on here, double click on there, it actually fills in that text. So I know it looks like a big string to type, and it is, but you can use this IntelliSense thing to actually make the typing much easier. And I make that equal to false. False is a way of telling the computer something is not true. So it's basically saying, I don't want this to happen. And you'll see exactly what I mean when we run the program. Watch carefully. Uh, although you don't have to be that careful. The program comes up, up comes the menu, or does it? No menu at all. Um, all we see now is the text, which is great. It looks like a finished program. So we can use that to control whether or not the menus are displayed. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, just if I take out this line completely, which I will use delete to get rid of like that, and run the program now, we'll see our menus. Bang, there they are. If I include this line, and I can use this undo thing here, which is very powerful. You watch this, if I hit undo, the thing I just did is undone which puts my text back, run the program again, and hey, wow, diddy diddy, uh, no menus for us. Fantastic. So that's a way in which you can make programs that look like proper programs and don't have the menu appearing at the end, which is kind of useful. We'll leave that there and we'll go back to the slides. So we've got rid of the menu and all is well. So how do we do other things? Well, it turns out to be quite easy. Um, each snap is actually a piece of C-sharp program that we can use. And the technical term for this is a method. And you can read all about methods uh, in the book. One more not so subtle plug. Each method has a name. Some of the methods are given things to work on. Some just do things. And we can use methods to make our programs a bit more interesting. Here's a snaps method called set background color. And you give it a color and it sets the background to that color. So snaps color red is, as you would expect, red. Um, and the set background method is given one of these colors and goes bang and changes the background to that color. If I want to, I can actually put in the individual red, blue, and green components uh, in the range 0 to 255. There's a fairly complex, not complex, there's a technical reason why it's 255 and not a different number, which I haven't really got time to go into now. It is in the book. <laughs> Everything's in the book. Uh, next week's 
Ottery numbers, the whole lot, it's all in there, trust me. Uh, but uh, as far as we're concerned, just keep them in that range, it'll be fine. So red 100, blue 200, green 50. I have no idea what that colour looks like. Perhaps we could write a programme and find out. Let's do that. So remember that, red 100, blue 200, green and 50. So if I go back into here and I go, uh, we go snaps dot set snaps engine dot set background color and then I go red um, I have to go back red 100 blue 200 green 50 red 100 blue and that, notice again intelligence is, is helping me here blue can't see blue 200 green 50 okay blue 200 green 50 so what happens now is that when the program runs it obeys the statement to set the background color before the program ends and i've missed a colon now if you see a wavy red line it means bad things are about to happen so we put the colon back in the colon is a little bit of punctuation that says this is the name of the item and this is the value the item has. So red is set to 100, blue is set to 200, green is set to 50. Run the program. Let's find out what color that really is. Such excitement. It's purple. OK, I'm OK with that. It's quite a nice purple. I'll, I'll write that down. Um, that's because although I've got all the primary names in my snaps colors, uh, red, green, blue, yellow, whatever, I haven't got all the special all the other colors which you might want to use so uh, you can put whatever color you like in there and it will just work so that's quite sweet we now know how to set background colors and i bet the next slide says do a walkthrough yes it does we've done that we can move on um, sometimes you want to give the appearance the computer is thinking or at least slow your program down turns out there's a method called delay which will do that for you as well um, if i put uh, a number in there uh, 1.5 that's a second and a half that will make my program pause for one and a half seconds. Um, you want to see that working? Of course you do. So I'm going to go and make a screen that goes purple and then snaps dot snaps engine. I can't type with an audience, it's no good. Delay. Um, 1.5 seconds, please. Uh, and then ba -dum -ba -dum. so you can use this to make countdown timers or whatever you fancy egg timers you can put 300 seconds there and boil the egg for the perfect five minutes so you can make a program that will turn the screen red uh, when five minutes have gone by so you can use this as, an egg, as your own egg timer I'm going to put another snaps uh, display background color thing here so snaps dot set oh snaps engine can't type today set background color I'm going to use one of the built-in colors. Uh, snap, snaps, color, uh, dot, and okay, these are all the colors I've got. Let's go for, I don't know, um, yellow. Quite like yellow. You never guess what, uh, what the other ones do. They've all got sensible names. So that will mean that we'll have um, a second and a half of purple followed by yellow. Run the program, prove it works. Win a coconut. What could go wrong? So here we go. Text comes up, then we go purple, then we go yellow. So now you can make a program that went through all kinds of colors. In fact, you could even make it display that this is yellow, this is blue. You could get somebody, you could make a program that teaches what colors are. This screen is yellow, this screen is blue, this screen is purple. In fact, yeah, well, well why not? You could do that, that will work. That looks like kind of fun to me. So, right, fine. Um, in terms of what delay does, it gives you time to look at something and you can put a number in there, <coughs> big as you like. If it's very big, <laughs> the program will sit there for ages because that's what programs do. That's the kind of thing they do. So yeah, um, keep that in mind. You can always kill it by pressing the, the cross like you could. Now this is kind of fun as well. This makes your program speak. Now, displaying text is fine. Sending text out to be spoken is wonderful. Um, and so what we'll do now is we'll just um, have a little look at this. Uh, so same kind of thing you've displayed text we've made text titles we've set background colors let's make a program that just sort of speaks after all this um snaps engine dot s p e a speak string there you go and we'll say uh, this is a yellow screen if you spell it wrong of course um the speech you get will be interesting 
um, but I'm just hoping that this actually works in a way that we can hear from the computer. We shall see. So we will get a purple screen, a yellow screen. This is a yellow screen. And I'm sure it said it, but I can't hear it. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, oh, because the speaker's turned off. Turn it on again. Let's stop the program. You see, nothing's ever perfect in this world. I think I turned it off because it got annoying. Run the program again. Uh, so it turns out the reason it didn't speak is because I turned the volume down. This is a yellow screen. Did you hear that? I'll make it louder and run it again. Um, I'm hoping that... Oh, hear the ding! Uh, it was a bloke as well, which is interesting, because sometimes it isn't. <laughs> it's judge driven by the settings on your speech output. Okay. This is a yellow screen. Hello. See, so it does work. It, it'll speak for you and you can give it text and it will say that and there are properties you can set um, on the system in terms of what voice you're going to use which will affect how that sounds as well. So back to the plot. Click, click. Um, we made it speak which is cool. So you can make the screen colour change. You could time an egg with it. Make an egg timing program now. You can make a program that sits in the corner and does nothing for an hour and suddenly goes, I'm watching you. Um, you can do all kinds of fun things. You can make messages that appear over time, strange ghostly utterings that appear um, with intervals. Um, and there are other snaps you might want to find and have a play with too. Um, I hope you find that interesting and maybe even useful. And thank you so much for watching. There will be other videos. Other videos are coming. This is the second one. There are going to be a whole bunch more. Keep watching the channel and they will appear. Thank you so much and bye-bye.